One of the things that helps me the most with my anxiety is taking care of my plants. I don't exactly know why, but I think taking care of and tending to the needs of something other than myself helps me get away from my own thoughts, even just for a few minutes, and it really helps my well-being. But just a couple of years ago, taking care of plants actually had the opposite effect on me. Most of the plants I had died quickly, leading to feelings of stress and anxiety. So I finally decided over the years, especially as my more demanding plants started dying, that I would mostly care for plants that were really hard to kill. And in this video I'll be sharing with you what these low maintenance but beautiful plants are. Before we begin, a quick warning. If you have fur babies at home, be mindful that some of these plants may be toxic for cats and dogs. Please do your own research prior to bringing these plants home with you, especially if your fur baby is fond of chewing on plants. Now before we begin, I want to get something that will apply to almost all plants out of the way. Oftentimes, beginner plant parents ask how often they should water a plant in terms of days or weeks. But for most plants, there really isn't a simple time-based answer to be given. What matters more is how dry the soil is, not how much time has passed since your last watering. And this, the dryness of the soil, can be affected by many factors, from how far the plant is from the windows, how much sunlight there is, how dry or hot the air is, or even what material the planter is made from. So even if you put two of the same plant next to each other on the same windowsill, but one is in a clay pot while the other is in a plastic pot, the one in the clay pot will need more frequent waterings regardless of other factors. So what's important is the water based on how dry the soil is, not how much time has passed. To check for moisture, simply stick your finger a couple of centimeters or about an inch or two into the soil. If you can't yet feel for the moisture, don't fret. But you'll also know the soil is still moist if it sticks to your fingers like so. If you're still nervous, which I was at the beginning, you could also buy a moisture meter as I'm showing here. You'll simply need to stick this device into the soil near your plant's roots and it'll just tell you how moist it is. Now some plants love it when their soil is evenly moist all the time. If you ask me, these are a bit harder to take care of. I love plants who can tolerate a bit of dry soil. These require much less attention and maintenance and these are therefore much harder to lose if you forget to water them or leave your house for vacation for a few weeks. So in this video I'll only mention such plants that love the dry soil. Our first low maintenance plant is my personal favorite, the pothos plant. This one will grow even if you just cut up a branch and leave it in some water. It generally likes medium to low sunlight, so it's a great one for your darker rooms. In fact, too much direct sunlight might burn the leaves. Some varieties are variegated like mine, and these require a bit more sunlight to keep the patterns, but no worries. With lower light, they simply lose the patterns and become a deeper green. This won't mean that you'll lose your plant. Again, this plant doesn't like a soggy soil. In fact, it prefers its soil to be dry before a watering. I water mine about once every two weeks, and in the winter months even less frequently, maybe about once a month. If you pick a pot with drainage holes in the bottom, it'll be much easier to take care of. When it's time to water, simply take your whole plant to your tub or your sink, water it fully, and wait until all of the water has drained from the pot. And please make sure you don't leave any excess water in there so you can avoid root rot. Like I said before, one of the best things about this plant is that you can very easily propagate it. Just take a long branch, find one of these root nodes, and cut the branch slightly above the node. If there's a leaf near the node, cut that off as well. You should have at least two or three leaves on your cutting ideally. When you've cut up as many branches as you'd like, simply put them in a jar and fill it with water. In a few weeks, you'll notice roots growing from the nodes. I now have about six new plants that I propagated from one single plant. Even if you don't have the space for more plants, this would just be a wonderful gift for a friend. And by the way, don't fret if you see a few dry leaves on your plants. This is totally normal, as long as it's not happening too frequently. Just nip those dry leaves off gently to prevent the plant from sending unnecessary resources to them. 
Our second super easy plant is the snake plant. This one is just beautiful and it comes in different colors. Most often I've seen lighter green ones with yellow edges. As you can see here, mine is a darker green variety. I think the snake plant is probably the absolute easiest plant to take care of ever. It'll survive even if you forget watering it for more than a month. In fact, it'll be quite happy about it. This plant really likes medium indirect light, but it will also tolerate low light. It'll just grow a little bit more slowly. It loves a dry soil, so make sure never to water it unless the soil is completely dry. And of course, also make sure that your pot has drainage holes and that you wait until it fully drains after each watering. Our third beginner friendly plant is the parlor palm. Now this one I just bought from Ikea. It also loves medium indirect light, in fact it'll probably be unhappy in too bright or too direct sunlight. Just like the others, this one also doesn't like soggy soil, so make sure the soil is dry before watering. Also make sure that your pot has holes and all the water drains out after you water it. And a bonus, this one is totally safe for your fur babies as well. And last but not least, our fourth low maintenance plant is the spider plant. I grew this one here from little spider babies that my mother-in-law gave me last year. This one likes a bit more light than the first three, but it still doesn't love direct sunlight. And it also likes a dry soil before waterings. What's best is that it grows these adorable little babies after a little while, and if you'd like, you can cut these up and have your own baby spider plant. All you need to do is pick out the ones that have grown a little bit of their roots, cut them, and plant them in a bit of soil. The roots will grow and get stronger over time. And another bonus, this plant is also totally safe for cats and dogs, though I have heard that cats have an affinity to it, so you may still want to keep it a bit out of their reach to avoid a mess. And that brings us to the end of the video. What are your favorite low maintenance plants? Leave them as a comment down below so that we can all benefit from your experiences as well. Until next time, take good care of yourself and your plants. Bye.